Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this is a video inviting you to enrol on my Nakshatras worldwide course and the website's called www.nakshatrasadvancecourse.com and I'm filming near our healing centre in the far west of Ireland in County Sligo near the Atlantic Ocean. Now, let me say first of all the course isn't all that advanced in terms of what you'd need to know to enrol. In fact, as long as you know the basics of the Vedic chart, you know, planets in signs and houses and so forth, you can enrol. But second, it is advanced in terms of the magnificence of what you will learn from it. So, How does the course work? Well, it's in two parts. So in part one, we study one nakshatra after another all the way through the 27 nakshatras. So you get background notes on the nakshatra system to start the course and on all the analysis criteria that apply to the nakshatras. And then you get a detailed description of the energy of each nakshatra as you start it. So number one nakshatra is Ashwini, so you get quite a long, detailed and beautiful description of what it is to be an Ashwini. And you write up your own aid memoir description of each of the 27 signs. And in addition you do two case studies. So if I have a planet in the nakshatra you're studying, you write up what it means. So in my case, Rahu in Ashwini. Please take cover. <laughs> but secondly, you write up wherever you have a planet in each of the 27 nakshatras. Now, if either you or I don't have a planet in a nakshatra, you bring in a family member or maybe a celebrity as long as you can get a good time of birth for the celebrity, an accurate one. So in other words, as you work through all the 27 nakshatras and do two case studies for each, you learn in great depth about the nature of the energy and the divine meaning and the destiny of each nakshatra and you also learn how to interpret it and that's the, the basis of part one of the course. So what are the nakshatras? Before I mention part two, let's just briefly define the nakshatras. Well the nakshatras are the deeply ancient and wonderful lunar zodiac of Vedic astrology, the 27 lunar signs. And their basis is a immeasurably powerful and accurate depiction of our emotional identity and our consciousness arising therefrom. And their beauty and power is that they actually describe each person who has an emphasis in that nakshatra, warts and all. They don't pull punches. And so, when you've been working with nakshatras for a bit, you can pick out, my God, I'm sure he's a Danista because he's sort of doing these things. It's so accurate. And it can sound very critical. And perhaps we're right to be critical of our lower and more unfortunate characteristics. But the point is, the nakshatras are growing energy. And so we can use the perception to say, oh no, I know I can tend to be too critical, I'm doing it now, I'll stop that. And of course you can go beyond that to heal and empower. And all my astrology readings and courses are linked to healing techniques. So I work closely with my partner Maggie Pashley, who does many, many, many worldwide online energy healing techniques, see www.maggiepashley.com, 
M-A-G-G-I-E-P-A-S-H-L-E-Y dot com. And also, we need to empower ourselves so we leave behind the negativity, even the evil and the stress and go to the higher potential of each of the nakshatras. And the description you get, which is a most ancient description, I mean, dating back 3,000 years, but much longer, you know, com combines the whole spectrum of the positive and negative depictions of each sign. And so, of course, we handle it in a very authentic, genuine and caring way because we're looking at your chart and mine. We're not trying to sort of gabble out formula and show how clever we are. We're trying to be truthful, honest and caring. Then you will be amazed at the readings you can do using the nakshatras where people have planets. Well, I'll come to that later on. So let me just mention part two of the course. Well, part two of the course is an analytic techniques using the nakshatras. And again, they are so powerful. So for example, there's Navtara and Nadi nakshatras. And basically that, for example, says how we will experience the energy of a nakshatra given the sequence numbering it, 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 it appears measured from our natal moon in particular. Or you can also use it for other planets. And so that shows how favourably or unfavourably you will experience the energy of any other nakshatra. And so it depicts, for example, where you're going to have very great personality benefits in relationship with someone in a particular nakshatra. It'll define what exactly those benefits are. And of course, there are even you know, forbidden combinations and you should really probably run from if you run into anyone who has a nakshatra that's in a very unfortunate sequence from your moon. Um, also, the nakshatras are used for health, for depictions of particular health issues you, you need to watch against and may have to come up against. And the nakshatras have a very powerful use in prediction. In other words, there's prediction using the dashas, the Vedic predictive periods, a, a really immeasurably valuable prediction sequence where we go from period to period rule by one planet after another in a predictable sequence in fact the whole cycle runs 122 years so we don't experience all of it in one lifetime and when for example you're in Mars predictive period Mars Dasher your Mars ruled nakshatras will be activated and so you can predict what areas of your life will be activated not just by where Mars is in your birth chart but also where your Mars ruled nakshatras are. And of course the same applies to transits. Vedic astrology has a very powerful and sophisticated statement of what it means to have a planet transiting through a particular sign, through a particular house in your chart, and aspecting another planet in your chart. And so when transits mean that the energy of a planet is activated in your life, those areas of your life that are the nakshatras ruled by that planet will also be activated. So it's really wonderful to complete part one, a study of all the 27 nakshatras and each of our planets where they are found in a nakshatra and then move on to the very powerful, very tangible uh, analytical techniques using the nakshatras. So, okay, to conclude this video about why you should en enrol on my Nakshatras course, let me give a couple of examples of 
the sort of benefits that you only get from nakshatras. For example, if you're, you know, your own chart or you're doing a reading with someone who has, say, two or three planets in Punavasu nakshatra, well, it's important to know that that person will ask lots of questions, potentially, depending on what else is in their chart, but that person will ask lots of questions. And it's important to reflect to them, but are you looking for answers? They might be very cerebral, particularly if they have other planets in sort of mercurial and very cerebral signs. So you can see at a glance a huge extra dimension offered to chart understanding just by looking at where planets fall in nakshatras. Okay, another example is Chitra nakshatra. Now like many of the nakshatras, Chitra spans two signs, one half of it's in Vedic Virgo and the other half is in Vedic Libra. And so you know instantly that a Chitra is quite temperamental and creative. A Chitra is born to manifest his special spark. But actually they're quite sensitive and they can be very easily abused and also go into quite temperamental behaviours. So at a glance, if you see that the person has a planet, particularly a, ma a major planet, in Chitra Nakshatra, you can give that advance. You can give that advice. Okay, Revati, the final Nakshatra, the 27th. At its best, the shepherd who leads souls to God. Another example, Pushyami in Cancer. Power animal, the ram. You know, Pushyamis are so pushy, they're so caring, the ram cares for every single one of the sheep he shepherds. But they're so pushy, they care, even if those people don't want to be cared for. So, you, you know, this is just a tiny example of the instant, wonderful interpretive power and great understanding that the use of the nakshatras give. And of course, you don't leave it at that, always. You must gear it to, okay, what's the perception here? Let's really clarify it. What's the possibility for healing here, for healing your life? And how can you be empowered so that you can burn your negative karmas and scripts so that you can manifest the special spark that you came to manifest this lifetime? So if you look up here somewhere, my very kind webmaster says he's going to sort of show my website address on the video so I hope that can happen easily. Anyway it's www.nakshatrasadvancedcourse.com and it's the follow-on from my foundation Vedic Astrology course mastervedicastrology.com. So I hope to hear from you and I'm very very proud of what my Nakshatra course offers. It really does mean that you can amass such a completeness, completeness of knowledge and insight into the nature of the nakshatras, yourself and the people you deal with, and also the analytic techniques in part two. So, hope to hear from you. Thank you.